Good morning. God morning to you. On today's Good Friends, we have the chant master, God bearer, light filler, Nina Rao. Thank you so much for being here. Cute Nikki. <laughs> I, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I got to see you for the first time in person in Maui. I believe that was 20, maybe 2021 in December. Could right? be. I don't know if we did we do that. Like it, that was right after COVID. Yeah, we did because yeah. we were wearing masks or we were supposed to be. <laughs> I did. <laughs> we Right. I remember seeing you walk past the first time and I was like, oh, that's Nina. And the first time I had ever seen you, you were on stage with Krishnadas. It was probably maybe my second or third song I had been introduced to of his, mm -hmm. um, likely Sitaram. And I'm like, who is this gorgeous? This goddess up on stage. You had the hand symbols and you were completely single, like, single pointed it seemed as if you were gone like blissed out and i'm curious to know when you're up there whether you're singing or whether you're playing with katie touring with him and i see your eyes close and there's this resonance around you is it what i feel like i'm assuming maybe there's thoughts that are coming in and out or does it feel like there's just the sound just the music just the chant i think it varies from day to day um, but one thing that's been consistent throughout, whether I'm chanting with him or chanting by myself or chanting with anybody else, um, is that the chanting really roots me into mm -hmm. my place in here and now. Whether my thoughts are blowing around in the wind a little bit, that's possible. <laughs> I'm sure I have grocery lists and I have all kinds of things going through my mind. But I do feel that when I sit down to chant, it's my way of committing to the practice. Yeah. And it's the practice that holds me sort of firm uh, more than anything else. Do you feel like it's easier, let's say today, than it was 10 years ago to stay here and now, to stay in the heart when you're in the midst of your practice? Um, I don't, I wouldn't say it's easier. What I would say is that I do it for longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, when I started to chant uh, years ago as an adult, um, I had chanted as a child, but then didn't for many years. And then as an adult, I found that I was able to um, really arrive, like I was saying to you, um, and it wasn't hard. Mm -hmm. It pulled me like from the heart center. So I didn't have any choice. Yeah. And, you know, which is not to say that now with my regular practice, I don't have days when I just wish I wasn't sitting down to do practice. But <laughs> I have when we do like the hundred other things I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. But um, I would say it's easier because my faith and confidence that the practice is working on my behalf has mm. grown over the years just by virtue of having done it for so many years. I have that That's beautiful. experience, that understanding, yeah. So tell me about the nine-year-old Nina that's sitting with her grandpa, learning Kirtan for the first time and what specific chant you were learning like that you can remember that maybe pulled you in a little bit at that young age. I know you stopped for a while, but just kind of let's go back into that, into that place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was purely accidental. Uh, my grandfather was an engineer for the British government back in the days of the British government in India, retired. Um, and my experience of him was just kind of working around the house, fixing things, fixing the well, dealing with the coconuts that had to be taken down from the trees. And But what I did notice in the corner of his room was a shelf full of books Fortunately for me, they were in English and they were um, some of the epics, Ramayan, Mahabharat, Krishna Leela, and they were in English. And in my in the day that I was young and on summer holiday, we didn't have iPads, we didn't have phone, we didn't have television. So we read and I would read what was on his shelf. He also had a harmonium 
and you know i the year that i asked him to play it for me was when i was thinking that oh, i want to learn how to play a musical instrument and i never had and i still haven't um so i said you know Aja, would you play this for me and he said i will but you have to sing with me <laughs> so i said well okay you know i didn't know what it was going to be and he called my mom and her sisters and my cousins who lived in India at the time. I didn't, I was just there on holiday. And he started this chant um, to Ganesha called Vinayaka, which is actually on my first album. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to that chant on that album, you hear a recording of him singing at first. It was something mm -hmm. I recorded back then when they had small tape player, tape recorders, we know with four buttons on it. Yes. And um, I recorded him. And then when I recorded the album, I had my family, my sisters and our children singing with us and it kind of gets blended with that. But my experience of that chanting was that, you know, I was just participating in an event where we all came together. Mm -hmm. It was we were doing the same thing. And at the same time, while I was going inward, I also felt expansive, if, if, that, if you can understand what I mean mm -hmm. by that. Yes. And, but I didn't have the words at the time. Nobody talked about it. It wasn't, you know, we didn't discuss spirituality. We just did it. We had rituals mm -hmm. in the house. There was puja happening. Lights were lit. Incense was lit every day. Uh, offerings were made in by flowers, all that happened. But we didn't discuss spirituality. That happens only now <laughs> in my <laughs> old age. <laughs> Your young age, you look amazing, mm -hmm. like radiating. Mm -hmm. So let's go beyond little Nina. Tell me how you became this. Like, could, if you went back and told nine-year-old Nina that you were talking about spirituality that you're teaching you know every day you're chanting every day like this is your life do you think she would have believed you no no um I didn't even believe it when an astrologer said something to me in my young 30s you know I they weren't sure exactly wasn't clear what it was that I would be doing but something about teaching something about activating my throat chakra, none of the things that I ever thought about and still really don't think about. And also being um, a central part of a spiritual community. Yeah. These were things that I was told and I did feel that about the spiritual community because it was at that time that I met Krishna Das, I first heard about Ram Das mm -hmm. and I started reading, you know, spiritual books in an, as an adult. Mm. Um, where we were discussing the philosophy behind some of these epics, teachings, practices, meditation, chanting, and all that. So no, I, I could never have known. You know, my <laughs> career, I don't even want to call this a career path, but when I was young, what I thought about was what I was going to study, what was going to be my profession, will I get married, where will I live, will I have mm -hmm. children, I think these are common things that many people think about. And, um, you know, I studied economics. I went mm -hmm. to, I came to New York. I worked in a bank on Wall Street. That was my first job. We did that for a few years. Um, burned out. Decided <laughs> that I loved traveling in Africa, which I had done with my parents on wildlife trips. And I took people on wildlife safaris in Africa and then also in India and started my nonprofit Saving Wild Tigers for wildlife conservation. And it was at that time that I came in contact with Krishna Das and chanting once again. Mm. So, um, and even then, you know, I knew him. We were friends for many years. I helped him do certain things at a time when he was just taking off. And even when he asked me to chant on Flow of Grace back in 2005, even then, I figure, okay, yeah, you know, I'll do this one Hanuman Chalisa and that'll be that. Mm -hmm. But somehow we're here. 
<laughs> and I, I just, it, and I'm, we're here because I followed the path of practice that my guru laid out for me. Yes. So tell me, yeah. who is your guru? So that's her. <laughs> if you can see her, Siddhima? if you can't. Yeah. Yes, if you can't see her, her name is Sri Siddhima. Sri Siddhima. Yes. And Sri Siddhima took care of Maharaji named Karoli Baba for um, decades while he was in the body. Mm. When he left the body, many people feel that um, he transmitted his guruness, let's just say, to her. Mm -hmm. And after he left the body, um, many people who missed Maharaji would be in her presence because everything she ever did was surrendered to Maharaji. She never took credit for anything. If you asked her a question, she'd say, I don't know anything, but mm -hmm. Maharaji said this. And that was the same when I met her. I... Um, went in search of a guru after I met Krishnadas in, in back in 1996 and he was talking about Neem Karoli Baba. Mm. And that devotion that I felt in Krishnadas's voice, I felt in my heart and I wanted to take it somewhere. I wanted to put it at someone's feet. Yeah. You know, and um, even though I was told, you know, you don't find the guru, the guru finds you, all that, I just thought to myself, I must go to Kenchi, mm. to the place where they, they were with him. There's something there for me. So finally, when I was able to find out where it was, um, Krishnas then told me about Siddhima. At that, in those days, we, he didn't talk much about her, and mostly it was because she didn't want to be spoken about. Mm. And, you know, her pictures weren't seen anywhere and so forth. So I did go for Durga Puja, Navaratri, in the fall of 1998. And um, I understood that this was the being that had installed herself inside of my heart. It took a little while to understand what that really meant, but in some ways I didn't question anything. I just mm -hmm. followed her, the trail of her sari. I just didn't think about it much. And to this day, she stayed with me. She still stays with me, even though she's not in the body. And everything that she ever said to me, the way she was in as a model has guided um, how I want to be. Whether I can do it is something else, but how I want to be is what she is. Mm. You said you went seeking, like looking, and it sounds like she put those books, those English books on that bookshelf, you know, yes. near you at nine. You know, she was in that room with y'all singing when you were nine. She called you through Krishnadas, through Maharaji. And here we are. You know, it's always, she's always been there. I love that you see that thread because that's how I see it. I can feel yeah. it. I can feel it. I, when I went to Kenchi, I did not feel, before I got there, I remember expressing to Pintu, to Alex, who was also there, that I wanted to feel closer to Sri Siddhima because that was the only thread that I felt like I didn't have. You know, first it was Ram Das, and then Baba got me, Maharaji got me in like 2020, and I was chanting Ram. I learned the entire Hanuman Chalisa. I sing it along with you, along with KD. I, tr I chant your Sri Ram J Ram, which is a little different and really dope. <laughs> I like yours the best <laughs> of everyone's. I sing it, I'll put um, my favorite one in the link in the show notes. Um, but I just, I'm like, I wanna feel closer and I would sit I would sit there at that, what do you call it, where they have her handprints and her feet prints, right there in the middle of that room. It's, it's at the altar. That's her samadhi, actually. Her ashes are under that marble slab. Oh, I that was there when marble. they were, 
Yeah, so that's um, actually there's a marble slab and then there's a rose quartz feet, mm. right? That are pink that you're seeing. Yeah. So when the when that was installed, um, I forget the year now. I guess it was 2018. Mm. I was there, and what they do is they inter the ashes in ah. there. So it's like it's a living presence, you know, continues to emanate her energy. Um, so that's underneath the rose quartz of her feet. I, I remember sitting in there and people coming in and out and sitting with Pintu. And this was the first day that we had first arrived for the Bandara in 2022, I believe. Mm -hmm. And as we were going to leave and go get lunch, Jaya, Ma, who I didn't know at the time, she came out from a gate and she said hi to Pintu and Pintu said hi to her. And she's like, have you guys been in? And I didn't know what they were talking about. And then she's like, go on in. And so we were allowed in. And I don't know any of the terms for any of this. I just know that we were blessed. It was grace that we got to enter into an area that isn't usually open you know, to the public. And we were able to pray by that tree. And I'd love to hear more about what that tree is. <laughs> I'd love to hear more about what was behind the gate. I was just there and I knew it was significant. And to this day, I still don't truly understand the significance. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when you were talking about the tree, you're talking about the peepal tree that's in the back side of the mm -hmm. ashram yes. next to the Yagyashala, which is like the open gazebo. And there's a tree with the rock underneath it, right? That says Om mm -hmm. Ram Ramayana exactly. Maha. Yeah. I don't know much about that rock other than that is the place where Maharaji sat when he mm -hmm. first decided that he was going to um he sort of declared that this is the place where there would be a temple wow and um if you were in the temple area in the front and you saw the hanumanji mandir and you went yes. to the left side of it there's a little cave in the back do you remember yes this is stone yeah so that is a place where they said it's not really a cave it's like a rock and mm -hmm. That's the place where uh, a Baba named um, Somvari Baba used to yes. meditate before the time of Maharaji. And so it's it was already sanctified by another. This is the beauty of these Kumau hills, you know, many saints, their footsteps are there for us to follow. Mm -hmm. And so then for whatever reason, who knows why Maharaji did everything he did. But that was when that's what I understand is the blessing of that that rock in particular uh, yeah. so oh my goodness i just have to share this so i started hearing more and more the sound of silence and it for me sounds like a ringing like a high-pitched e and i remember reaching out to ragu i reached out to kd i reached out to um donny uh, pintu's friend i reached out to pintu and donny was like that's above my pay grade i don't know you know ragu's like i don't i haven't heard it but i've heard of it and something told me to pick up miracle of love and I just flipped it open and I can't tell you what page I'll have to do a search in my Kindle because that one's digital and it said about that rock that he sat alone because there was nothing there but the rock and like wilderness and he said I can hear the sound here we'll have a temple I can hear the sound here and I don't know if he was talking about the same sound but it felt significant for me especially because I opened up to that page and to know that that's where we got to sit for a while, they, you know, Pintu let me sit there for at least a good 15, 20 minutes before we moved on and had Prasad before leaving. It was a blessed trip, very blessed. And then I saw you with Jaya and I'm like, oh my goodness, full circle, interviewing her about her book, which I also yeah. have and loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to sit there. It's, um, you know, people don't talk about that place very much because, you know, you can tell that it's, um, kept up as a place to worship, but most people don't sit there. They're up in the front in the temple area, but yeah. it's a very peaceful spot and that you found that and you found your peace there. And it's interesting, you know, I don't know what sound Maharaji heard, but if that's what connected you with him, that's all that matters. I love that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I would love to know your experience with chanting Ram. I've heard that he says, that's all you need. You chant Ram, everything is achieved. Have you had any personal experiences because you chant it so often? It's such a part of your being, your essence. I can feel it like pouring off of you. What's been your personal experience with it? 
Well, I think it's, um, I asked Siddhima this question, you know, because um, like Maharaji, who many, when people were in his presence, they saw that it was always um, on his tongue. So even if you didn't hear it audibly, his tongue was always moving as if he was repeating Ram, 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 like this. And, um, and when I was with, uh, and then I'm sh I don't know if you know this, but Maharaji also um, had this practice of writing Ram in a notebook yes, every day. I do it too. Right? I do it. Yeah, there you go. So that's called Likhita Japa. So all of this repetition of the name is called Japa. And Japa is a big part of our tradition in India across many different systems of knowledge. It's not just in Maharaji's temple, it happens everywhere. And the understanding is, is that as we repeat this sacred sound, we are invoking its essence and just as a seed will blossom into a flower when you water it, when you, when we speak the sound of the name, it's as if we're watering it so the wisdom can blossom inside of us. It's a very individual thing, very individual thing. So when people say like, what is the meaning of Ram? It's important to understand that it's your understanding of what your divinity is. Mm. And it's a real thing. <laughs> it's not yeah. just, you know, some new age talk. It's a real thing. It's like, who are you? What is your true nature? Can you trust yourself? So I think that it's important to understand that that really is where this is coming from, that the chanting of the name. Maharaji said, Ram Nam Karne Se Sab Pura Ho Jata Hai. This is what we hear from our elders. Mm -hmm. which is that by saying the name of Ram, so it's important to know that you have to do it. <laughs> right. Say, by saying the name of Ram, everything will come to fruition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can just take that as a signpost mm -hmm. and go along this journey, you know, and I have, and it, it might not be necessarily only chanting that sound syllable because I chant a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But Ram essentially is the name of divinity, as there are many. So, but as you know, um, it's kind of a core part of our practice chanting Sri mm -hmm. Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram or Ram 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 or Sita Ram because it's related to our beloved Hanuman. Yes. And uh, Siddhima when Maharaji left the body, also had the same practice, probably before too, of writing Ram Nam in the book. And when I was with her, um, you could always see her finger like this, like on her thigh, as if she was writing, you know, the whole time, always. It just didn't stop. So and that, those were really small. She wrote a lot of Rams. Maharaji wrote <laughs> sparse Rams. <laughs> That's the way my page looks. <laughs> I'm like few Rams, but I've I've seen City Mouse page. They're gorgeous. Yeah. And you know, she did that till her very last moment. She was wow. writing all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jaya will say, like sometimes she had to say, Ma, close the book now. You can go to sleep, you know, and then you yeah. can see when she's tired and she's kind yeah. of trailing off. But you know, they lived in that space, whatever that space is they entered into it and stayed in it in a fuller and more mm -hmm. fuller way as time went on until they become it. Yeah. You know, and that's for us to experience on our own. It's hard to describe that in words. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Hanuman did too, according to the stories, according to Ramayan, you know, he was always in the space of Ram. You know, it's said in the Ram Charitmanas, um, that, you know, we can't get into the whole story of the Ramayana, of course, but we know that Hanuman is a central character mm -hmm. um, that brings together the beloveds of Ram and Sita who are separated. In a similar way, we consider ourselves separated from our divinity, and Hanuman brings us back into that space of oneness, like Maharaji said, all one. Yes, yes. And so in the Ram Charitmanas, um, Sri Ram asks Hanuman, he says, you know, how do you see me? And Hanuman says, 
O oh Lord, when I identify with my body, I am your servant. When I consider myself a soul, I am part of you. When I look on myself as a as spirit, I am one with you. Mm. And so, you know, if we follow in the footsteps of Hanuman, so this is the beauty of, you know, this was a big part of the practice that Ma gave us was chant the Hanuman Chalisa. She said it yes. over and over and over again. Maharaji said the same thing. You know, he said, people don't know. But the Hanuman Chalisa is Maha Mantra, which means it has transformative powers. Mm. And so the best way to be a good devotee is to invoke a de the greatest devotee, who is Hanuman. That's so beautiful. And, yeah. And so if he, um, you know, he takes many forms, he can change his form. And you hear in the way he's talking, like he accepts all these parts of himself. And if we can hear that from him, then we can do that for ourselves mm. as well. I remember someone asking Maharaji about Hanuman, about Christ, about Krishna, and him saying that they're all one. And I remember early trying to figure out, like trying to put it all together for myself. How is Hanuman and Christ one? And yeah. reading more about the stories and then kind of looking even into the scriptures of the Bible, which I hadn't done, they, they talk similar. <laughs> you know, Jesus mm -hmm. knew that he was one with the Father, but he always served the Father. It was always service, even though he is one, we are one with the Father. We have to be of service. That is why we are here. And also the images of Hanuman, like ripping open his chest, you know, to show Ram and Sita in his heart and the pictures of Jesus with his hand on his heart, with that fire around his heart. That's what we're practicing. That's what, when I'm chanting with you, with KD, that's what I'm chanting to, that feeling, like my heart, everything feels like not necessarily on fire all the time, not that intense, but warm. It's warm. And it doesn't really matter which chant I'm chanting. And I was going to ask you if the presence seems different when you're chanting like to Ganesha or, you know, Hanuman or Krishna. Is it that same, always that same expansiveness or do you experience it differently depending on which name you're calling, which name of God you're chanting? It's, it's a good question. Um, the answer is no, it's the same. Um, I might be called to chant one thing or the other. <laughs> I might be, you know, impelled to chant one thing or the other, depending on outside circumstances. If there's a particular festival or just my mood, you know, yes. it's, it's, and that's the beauty of all these names is that there's something for everyone at any time of the day, mm -hmm. any day of the year. Mm -hmm. And, um, but they all lead you to the same place. Oh, and um, I think it's, it's such a beautiful offering, these teachings, you know, for us. We're very fortunate that we have them, these practices. We're blessed. Which, which of the mantras, which name do you call when Nina is scared? Like when something has gone wrong or something appears that it is going wrong, quote unquote, which mantra do you turn to first? It's definitely Hanuman Chalisa. Yeah. And um, a lot of that comes from also from talking to Ma about things. And she would say, you know, if you have a nightmare or you're anxious about something or um, you want safety when you're traveling, anything. She would say, just chant the Hanuman Chalisa. And there have been times, you know, when I've been faced with my inner demons in such a way that I can't sleep. And they come in the form of just nightmares, like really difficult dreams. And I have found it in me to sit up and to sit in front of my altar and like just chant the Hanuman Chalisa, or even just sit up in bed. Somehow it's like a shield, you know, it's a protection shield. I really feel like that. And so um, she told us, she said, just, you know, just like in the Hanuman Chalisa, one of the lines is, Bhuta pisacha nikatinahiyave mahavir jabanama sunave. Ghosts and goblins cannot come near 
when they hear the name of Hanuman. Mm. So that it's right in there. It's right in yes. the Hanuman Chalisa. So, yes. um, but he definitely feels Hanuman. The energy of Hanuman is one of courage and wisdom and protection and refuge. Mm. And you know, sometimes it's no different than Maharaji. It's no different than Siddhima. Also, yeah, it's the same presence. Same presence. Your presence yeah. too. Thank you mm -hmm. for being here and sharing with us. What I love right now is I'm going to mute and I want you to sing. I want you to chant the way you chant and guide us into that presence where that is Maharaji, that is Sri Siddhima, that is Ram, that is Hanuman, that is Christ. Okay. Um, so since we have been talking about Hanuman, I will chant the Hanuman Chalisa. And um, it's relatively complicated for people who don't know it. It's 40 verses in praise of this being, Hanuman, the flow of grace, the wise one, the courageous one, the strong one, the sensitive one, the one who is fully surrendered to the divine and the one who is in service of the divine, our own divine hearts. So what I will um, ask you to do, if you know the words, of course, chant along with me. Um, if you don't know the words, you are welcome to just think about the name Ram, like Nikki's mentioned before. And we'll sing some of the names, Ram, a few times before we start the Hanuman Chalisa. And we sing it in the mantra form of Sri Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Sri Ram is a... Aus is, Shri means auspiciousness. Shri Ram, auspicious one. Jai Jai Ram, glory to you. Okay? And then we'll go into the Hanuman Chalisa and then we'll end again with Shri Sita Ram. But let's start with one Om together first. Jaya Kapishati Huloka Ujaga 
ರಾಮದೂತ ಅತುಲಿತ ಬಲಧಾಮ ಅಂಜನಿ ಪುತ್ರ ಪವನ ಸುತನ ಮಹಾವೀರ ವಿಕ್ರಮ ಭಜರಂಗಿ ಭುವತಿ ನಿವಾರ ಸುಮತಿಗೆ ಸಂಗಿ ಕಂಚನ ವರನ ವಿರಾಜ ಸುಮೇಶ ಕಾನನ ಕುಂಡಲ ಕುಂಚಿತ ಕೇಸ ಹಾತ ವಜ್ರ ಧ್ವಜಾಭಿರಾಜ ಕಾಂಡೆ ಮೂಜನೇಯೋ ಸಾಜ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ್ ಕೇಸರಿ ನಂದನ್ ತೇಜ ಪ್ರತಾಪ ಮಹಾಜಗವಂದನ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾಣ ಗುಣಿ ಅತಿ ಚಾತು ರಾಮ ಕಾಜ ಕರಿಬೇಕೋ ಆತು ಪ್ರಭು ಚರಿತ್ರ ಸುಧಿಬೇಕೋ ರಸಿಯ ರಾಮ ಲಖಣ ಸೀತಾ ಮನ ಬಸಿಯ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ರೂಪ ಧರಿಸಿಯ ಹಿಂದಿ ಖಾವ ವಿಕಟ ರೂಪ ಧರಿ ಲಂಕ ಜರಾವ ಭೀಮ ರೂಪ ಧರಿ ಅಸುರ ಸಂಹಾರಿ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಜಿಗೆ ಕಾಜ ಸಂವಾರಿ ಲಾಯ ಸಜೀವನ ಲಖಣ ಜಿಯಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ರಘುವೀರ್ ಹರ ಶಿವರ ಲಾಯ ರಘುಪತಿ ಕೀ ಬಹುತ ಬಣಾಯ ತುಮ ಮಮ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಭರತ ಸಮಭಾಯ ಸಹಸ ಪದಂ ತುಮ ರೋಜಸ ಗಾವೆ ಅಸ ಕಹಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಪತಿ ಕಂಠ ಲಗಾವೆ ಸನಕಾದಿಕ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿ ಮುನಿ ಸ ನಾರದ ಶಾರದ ಸಹಿತ ಅಹಿಸ ಯಮ ಕುಬೇರ ದಿಗ ಪಾಲ ಜಹಾಂತೆ ಕವಿ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಕಹಿ ಸಕೆ ಕಹಾಂತೆ ತುಮ ಉಪಕಾರ ಸುಗ್ರೀವನ್ ಕೀನ ರಾಮ ಮಿಲಾಯ ರಾಜ ಪದ ದೀನ ತುಮರೋ ಮಂತ್ರ ವಿಭೀಷಣ ಮಾನ ಲಂಕೇಶ್ವರ ಭಯ ಸಬ ಜಗ ಜಾನ್ ಯುಗ ಸಹಸ್ರ ಯೋ ಜನ ಪರ ಭಾನ್ ನಿಲ್ಯೋ ತಾಹಿ ಮಧುರ ಫಲ ಜಾನ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಮೋತ್ರಿಕಾ ಮೇಲೆ ಮುಖ ಮಾಹಿ ಜಲ ದಿಲಾಂಗಿ ಗೈ ಅಚ್ಚರ ಜನಾಹಿ ದುರ್ಗಮ ಕಾಜ ಜಗತ್ ಕೇ ಜೇತೆ ಸುಗಮ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ತುಮರೇತೆ ರಾಮ ದುವಾರ ತುಮರ ಖುಬಾರ ಹೋತ ನಾಗ್ಯಾ ಬಿನ ಬೇಸಾರ ಸಬ ಸುಖ ಲಹಿ ತುಮಾರಿ ಶರಣ ತುಮ ರಕ್ಷಕ ಕಾಹು ಕೋ ಡರಣ ಆಪನ ತೇಜ ಸಮಾರೋ ಆಪೆ ತೀನೋ ಲೋಕ ಹಾಂಕತೆ ಕಾಪೆ ಭೂತ ಪಿಸಾಚ ನಿಕಠಿನ ಹಿಯಾಬೆ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಜಬ ನಾಮ ಸುನಾವೆ ನಾಸೇ ರೋಗ ಹರೆ ಸಬ ಬೀರ ಜಪತ ನಿರಂತರ ಹನುಮತ ಬೀರ ಸಂಕಟ ಸೇ ಹನುಮಾನ ಚುಡಾವೆ ಮನ್ನ ಕ್ರಮ ಭಚನ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಜೋಲಾವೆ ಸಬ ಪರ ರಾಮ ತಪಸ್ವಿ ರಾಜ ದಿನ ಕೆ ಕಾಜ ಸಕಲ ತುಮ ಸಾಜ ಔರ ಮನೋರಥ ಜೋ ಕೋಯಿಲಾವೆ ಸೋಯೆ ಅಮಿತ ಜೀವನ ಫಲ ಪಾವೆ ಚಾರೋ ಯುಗ ಪರತಾಪ ತುಹಾರ ಹೇ ಪರ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಜಗತ ಉಜಿಯಾರ ಸಾಧು ಸಂತ ಕೆ ತುಮ ರಖುವಾರ ಅಸುರ ನಿಖಂದನ ರಾಮ ದುಲಾರ ಅಷ್ಟ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ನವ ನಿಧಿ ಕೇ ದಾತ ಅಸ ಬರ ದೀನ್ ಜಾನಕಿ ಮಾತ ರಾಮರ ಸಾಯನ ತುಮರೆ ಪಾಸ ಸದಾ ರಹು ರಘುಪತಿ ಕೇ ದಾಸ ತುಮರೆ ಭಜನ್ ರಾಮ ಜಿ ಗೋಪಾಲೆ ಜನಂ ಜನಮ ಕೇ ದುಃಖ ಬಿಸರಾವೆ ಅಂತ ಕಾಲ ರಘುವರ ಪುರ ಜಾಹನ್ ಜನ್ 
ब्रह्म हरि भक्त कहा और देवता चित्त न धरही हनुमत से सर्व सुख कर संकट कटे मिटे सब पीरा जो सुमेरे हनुमत बल वीर जय 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 हनुमान गोसाय कृपा कर गुरुदेव की नाय जो सत बार पाठ कर झूट ही बंधी महासुख हो जो यहाँ पड़े हनुमान चालीस होया सिद्धि साकी गौरी सुलसी दास सदा हरिचेरा की जे नाथ हृदय महडेरा पवन तनय संकट हरण मंगल मूर्ति रूप राम लखन सीता सहित हृदय बसहु सुरभु सियावर राम चंद्र पद जय शरण मंगल मूर्ति मारत नंद सकल अमंगल मूल निखंद श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 श्री 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 बजरंग बली हनुमान की जय श्री 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 संकट मोचन हनुमान की जय सियावर राम चंद्र जी की जय Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And for you listening at home, you have no idea how blessed you are right now. Just, not just by her voice, by the words, the meaning, the presence that they brought you into and flow of grace. I remember Krishna Das saying something like, when Hanuman enters your life, like your troubles are over, your burdens are lifted. And that is what you are experiencing. That is what you are feeling. I will put all the links to my favorite Nina jams. <laughs> and then also the link said, um, you can click through to hang out with her. And I'd love for you to share Nina, what offerings you have that, you know, where we can hang out with you in the heart. Um, well, coming up, um, I actually will be going to in person going to California this weekend, uh, but I'm not sure if people will be hearing this in time. Um, so I'll be chanting there. And actually after that, I will be going to India. 
So I'll be in Kenchi for Durga uh, Puja Navratri, and I'll be leading a sound healing retreat in South India in Vaidyagram at the end of November over Thanksgiving week, actually. Mm. And there are so many things after that, but if people would like to chant the Hanuman Chalisa, we do it 108 times on January 1st. It's a free event and it will happen at Tibet House in New York City. And we also live stream it free for everyone. But all my events, and there are many, <laughs> are mm -hmm. on my website, ninaravchant.com. That's perfect. Join her mailing list and you'll always be up to date. I get my emails. I know what's going on. So thank you. Good. Thank yeah, you, Nina, that. for <laughs> everything. Thank you for your practice, for bringing this to the world so that we can find him, we can find her, we can find this and share in it together. Thank you, genuinely. And you for sharing in your way. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. And we'll chat soon.